the symbol uh, symbolize uh, here. King use splash to symbolize the UST alumni. And then we we need uses um, the New Year's Eve family union to symbolize the island and TM. So they are good symbols and they are similes and a kind of linguistic feature. And then um, for a Kelvin and Brenda, they were just playing ping pong dialogue. I watched <laughs> the game and I was very excited. And, and even uh, Kelvin, even when he was counting, it was uh, such in a way that I, I, I counted with him. So it's kind of ping pong dialogue, very well presented. Um, and then the first speaker is KF. Now KF is a medical practitioner, so I expected something very difficult to understand. And then when he, he got through so quickly, until he slowed down, raised voice at stress hormone, then I understood. <laughs> he has made everything difficult, simple. And then with two extremes, the physical, physical, or physical thing, not mental. And another extreme will be the communication skill, the ma material therapy. With those two extremes, I further got grasp of um, the very difficult message that he has uh, gone through the whole life. Uh, and, and with those acronyms, simple enough, just two little alphabet. I, when you see I, you will become ill because I'm a medical practitioner. But we put together, we are well, we get well, so easy to remember. And then when it comes to Alice, Alice, I, I discovered that uh, you have a kind of suggestive style. Because of that style, uh, you suit everyone's appetite by saying just two words, travel smart. And then you, um, you use um, some kind of question like, why not, to invite everybody from the audience to open to an option. So it's a kind of um, a kind of style that open up an interactive atmosphere. Um, after Alice, it will be Ivy. Ivy created two very distinct characters, just like Ivy, a, a woman of strong principle. Those two characters, they are very clear. So Ivy imitated all the gestures of an old man and, and a woman, and by the kind of dialogue, she repeats the topic of the story, which is the uh, hooking horn. The hooking horn is um, the whiskers of the living lion, tiger, living tiger. So that is the hooking horn to grab our attention. And then it, become, it comes to with when and past continuous tense to set up the story, a type of setting. So we all expected when it was at that time, now, what now? And then uh, we then fed us with a what now, what the, the end of the story. So it is a kind of um, language uh, using the complex sentence to open up a story and then much, too, too much. Uh, and the, the best part I remember is hit from behind. You know, all that three words, uh, I, I won't be able to memorize um, that kind of special tradition, tradition of celebrating Easter. Uh, and then Steve, Steve. Uh, Steve, um, and he didn't follow the picture from the table master, but at the end, he actually followed the picture. That's why the story is within the score. And every day seems to be a festive day for the steam. Arpina. Arpina has Arpina. <laughs> and set, and she set up um, the kind of Indian 12 years ago, and then it gave us an unexpected ending at the end. We, uh, all of us cannot expect the ending was like that. It is very exciting. And Terry, 
um, th those two words, the rock, the rich, and give to the poor, let me understand those very difficult economy and liquidity theories. Oh, and Kel Kelvin Lau. Kelvin Lau, those words, tips that we will not tell kids. Hold my attention. The real team. And then another hope for my attention. And for Chloe. Uh, Chloe, that was the technical difficulties for a very new feature that uh, no one understood uh, and no one could understand. But at the end, Chloe told us they, the kids, do not know who their fathers are. Then cling, we all understood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the end. Back to heaven.